Hello, N4 H&H &H here with the Yaesu FT-DX10. I want to show you how to check and adjust the reference oscillator in this radio. Let me give you a quick synopsis of uh, what is a reference oscillator. Older amateur radios used crystals to set the frequency you were going to receive and transmit on, and there were multiple crystals. Modern radios will use something called a reference oscillator. There's still a crystal there, uh, a crystal meaning a, uh, a piece of quartz, that is inside of a little metal uh, container and it's soldered into a circuit board and we apply a voltage to that and it causes that quartz to vibrate or oscillate where we get the word oscillator. We want that vibration to be stable. In all radios we want to be stable but especially with a modern radio because the reference oscillator is what's driving every frequency that you see up on the display. As you rotate your VFO that's what you know produces that frequency. So it's very vital that that reference oscillator uh, remains stable. Now the modern radios have uh, options. Uh, not every radio will, will have this, but sometimes it's optional. Something called a TCXO. And uh, that's a good thing. What that's doing is using a, um, a stable environment of temperature to make sure that that quartz is vibrating at the same frequency all the time. Now, honestly, they can drift just a little bit. So the better quality uh, the TCXO is, the less drift there will be. Uh, some radios don't even have a TCXO, so they, they may drift enough you could even notice it, like listening to someone on the bands, especially people with older radios. You, you'll probably notice that they sound a little off frequency and you have to use your clarifier. And uh, it, that's because their uh, oscillator is drifting a little bit. But the reference oscillator in this radio um, has a TCXO built in it comes with the radio the ftdx10 and it's stable to 0 0.5 ppm 0. 0. 0.5 parts per million now the the big brother of this radio the ftdx 101d or mp ha also has a tcxo and it's actually a little more stable at 0. 0.1 ppm 0. 0.1 parts per million now interestingly enough the ftdx 5000 down here it has something called an oven-controlled crystal oscillator, which is stable to 0 0.05 parts per million. It's really, really stable. But let me put it in perspective for you. The 0.1 parts per million of the FTDX 101 and the 0.5 parts per million of this FTDX 10 is plenty, plenty good. You probably wouldn't be able to hear the difference in an in a on-air, you know, QSO uh, you, you probably wouldn't be able to tell the difference between the 0.1 and the 0.5. You would definitely be able to tell the difference if a radio did not have a TCXO because, because it, would, uh, it would drift uh, plus and minus a little bit off frequency. So I want to show you how you can check your reference oscillator to see how accurate it is um, with the National Institute of Standards, WWV. Now I've shown how to do this in previous videos uh, one with the FTDX 5000 MP and another with the Yaesu FT891. So if you haven't seen those videos, if you ha happen to have those radios, one of those or both of those radios, uh, you know, look for those videos on the channel here. But this time I'm going to do it with the FTDX 10. I'm going to use the same technique, and this technique could be applied to even other radios, other brands, as long as the radio has an opportunity, a menu adjustment, for you to fine-tune your reference oscillator. So we don't have a frequency counter in the room. We don't have a, a service monitor. So how do we check our reference oscillator uh, you know, here in our shack uh, without having those devices to do it with? Well, we'll check it against the National Institute of Standards. WWV is transmitting the time 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And they use amplitude modulation to, uh, to transmit a tick for every single second. And then uh, once a minute, they actually tell you what time it is in UTC. They take extreme care to ensure that their carrier is dead on it. So if we check our radio against them, we're, we're going to know that we're pretty, pretty accurate with our, our reference oscillator. So the way I do it, since we don't, you know, we don't all have a service monitor or a frequency counter in our shack, we're going to use the CW feature of our radio in something called the side tone. Remember with CW, the other station is not transmitting the tone you hear. They're just turning a carrier wave on and off. 
your radio has something called a BFO, beat frequency oscillator, that's beating another frequency against the frequency you're listening to, for example, here, 14065, to create something called the side tone. So when you beat two frequencies close to one another, you get a you get a heterodyne, as we call it. For example, you know that sound you get when somebody's uh, tuning up on sideband. That's two frequencies that are you know close enough to one another that they produce a another frequency by beating against one another that is within the range of human hearing. So I I choose a 600 hertz side tone for CW. So my BFO in in my radio beats against the incoming signal to produce a 600 hertz tone for me. So what we're going to do is we're going to make use of that to check our reference oscillator. Again, because we don't have a service monitor or a um, frequency counter available to us, right? Uh, not everyone does. Yesu aligns these radios at 14.2 megahertz. So, you know, in their mind, you know, roughly center of the uh, HF spectrum for amateur radio, 1.8 to 29.7 megahertz. Well, WWV has a transmitter transmitting at 15 megahertz, so that'll get us plenty close, right? So let's go ahead and hit the least significant digits up here and type in 150. That's enough. Just hit enter. And there's WWV signal. Hear that tone? That's 600 hertz. Because I have told this radio that I want my side tone to be 600 hertz. Now, how did I do that? Press the function knob. Now, let's say normally I'm, I've, I've got the function knob assigned to RF power. So I can reach up and turn it and I'm adjusting RF power. Let me lock this uh, VFO here. Now, I can go back into the menu and I can change it right here, CW pitch. And now when I turn the knob, I'm adjusting CW pitch. Now, so again, the BFO, the beat frequency oscillator, is producing another, it's like a small microtransmitter inside your receiver, and it's producing a frequency that, when beat against 15 megahertz, produces a 600 hertz tone in my ear, and that's what I want to hear. Now, uh, let me mention one other thing because we're going to make use of this button over here on the right of the VFO called ZIN and SPOT. We're going to be using the SPOT portion of that, but ZIN, zero N, is used in CW to let the radio make a minor fine adjustment in receive frequency so that you get a 600 hertz tone. Why? in case the person on the other end, the person that's transmitting that you're listening to, in case their radio is just a little bit off frequency. So the ZIN, the zero in, will zero in on their frequency so that you get your 600 hertz tone. But we're not gonna be using that. We're gonna do it the old fashioned way, which was a spot button. You'd hold it down and it would produce the, the, the uh, side tone for you. And then you would uh, adjust your VFO until the side tone uh, matched the tone you were getting from their, uh, as they turned their carrier wave on and off as they sent CW. So that's the, the uh, way we're going to do it. Now, first of all, I want to lower that pitch. So I'm going to rotate this and go down to 300. It doesn't go any less than 300. If it, if it would, we'd just get a little better resolution. But 300 is going to be good. So we've got this tone coming in. As a result of our receiver's BFO, beat frequency oscillator, beating against 15 megahertz, producing this 300 hertz tone. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to press the spot button. And if, if they're, they're, I mean, we know WWV is accurate. If my receiver's re reference oscillator is stable and accurate, then we're going to, when we hold this in, the tone that our radio is going to produce is going to match the tone we're getting right now from WWV. Again, they're just transmitting a carrier wave, but our BFO is beating against the carrier wave and producing that 300 hertz tone. So I'm going to long press Zen, Zen spot, Z zero in spot. So now I'm producing a 300 hertz tone using the spot circuit in the radio. I'm assuming that's a 300 hertz tone that I'm listening to right now from the BFO. But you hear that waviness? That's what you don't want. Now, how do we adjust that? Function, press the function knob, go to operation setting, general, and I've already dialed it down here to the bottom. You want to go to reference frequency fine adjust. It's on the default of zero. Let's try negative two. Now, you don't have to actually back out of the menu. If you long press your, uh, Zen, your Zen spot button, it'll come out. 
Oh, the waviness got worse. Hear it? You musicians out there should have no trouble detecting this because, uh, you know, you know, some people tune their guitar with harmonics. So you hear that? So we're not there. Let's go back in. We went the wrong direction. Let's try plus one. That's definitely close. Hmm. Let's try plus two. go press again we're within one Hertz or one cycle let me try plus three nope hear the waving is coming back So plus two, it seems to be the closest. That's definitely within one hertz, one cycle per second. So that's it. That's considered to me, that's dead on. Now that we know that a, that a factor of plus two is going to put us dead on it with the National Institute of Standards. Now, let me just be real here. You probably would have never known had I not shown you that because, um, uh, you know, a correction of plus two is not much. But we now know that this radio is accurate according to the National Institute of Standards with a fine adjustment of plus two. Now, let me let me mention something to you. It is possible that it, with extreme changes in temperature in your shack, like winter versus summer, that um, that ambient temperature out there could affect it a little bit. So I actually check mine uh, during the winter and then I recheck it during the summer just to see if I might need a, you know, a tweak plus or minus, you know, one or two digits. So, um, you know, but we're really quite close here with this setting. So that's how you check your reference oscillator and adjust it if necessary against the National Institute of Standards. And you can do this with any other radio that has the ability to, you know, set your C CW pitch down to 300 or as low as it'll go. And then, uh, you know, as long as you have a menu selection that allows you to do that fine adjustment, uh, adjust it and then hold down your spot button until you don't hear the waviness. If the, if the tone is the same without the spot button pressed as it is with the spot button pressed, then you've nailed it. So this radio is dead on. Okay, I hope you found the video helpful and informative, and let me thank my Patreons. Uh, it means so much to have you guys supporting me out there so I can continue to bring content like this uh, to the amateur community. I do appreciate you very much. Uh, and Patreons, you can send me questions. Uh, you can request video content through the Patreon website. That is a privilege that my Patreons have. And if you would like to become a Patreon, please do. You can go to www p a t r e o n patreon.com forward slash n four h n h and there are three levels of participation there the associate the executive and the vip the executives and the vips have some exclusive privileges in fact one of the things i've put up there recently is a glossary of amateur radio terminology and an explanation of the various knobs and buttons on modern transceivers so that might you might find that helpful um, you know, please, if you're an executive or a VIP Patreon, take advantage of that resource. And if you're not already a subscriber to the channel, please subscribe. And if you would like the video, that helps the channel out as well. And of course, um, you know, if you do subscribe, click the bell and you'll be notified when I upload the next video. That tone in the background has got to be annoying. <laughs> so, hey, uh, thanks for watching. And uh, I want to say 73 to you from N4 H&H. &H.